A female colleague presents with a restorative failure of a ceramic veneer on an endodontically treated maxillary left lateral incisor. After radiographic review and evaluation with the patient, an initial emergency treatment plan was discussed with the patient. The previous veneer restorations were improperly bonded and there was gingival inflammation at the interfaces of each restoration. The initial treatment would include placement of a fiber reinforced post and core and a provisional restoration. A complete aesthetic and restorative evaluation would be performed after completion of the provisional restoration. An initial shade selection was performed for the fabrication of the initial provisional restoration. Custom shade tabs were made using the exact composite material to fabricate the provisional. This allows a more accurate shade match and a realistic representation to the existing ceramic veneers. The use of a dental dam is required through all steps of the canal preparation and adhesive procedure. The canal length is measured from the radiograph and the desired post channel length is one half to two thirds the length of the canal. The gutta percha is removed with a series of gates glid and drills, a number one, a number two, and a number three, to the established predetermined length. It is important to be careful and not to touch the canal walls. The use of a heated instrument can also be used to remove gutta percha. The channel preparation was shaped with color-coded pre-shaping drills used in sequence to establish the desired intraradicular length and size for the selected post. The final 1.2 millimeter color-coded drill is used to complete the intraradicular preparation to the desired coronal diameter and predetermined length which corresponds to the color-coded 1.2 millimeter rebuild a glass fiber reinforced post. The completed intraradicular preparation. The pre-selected rebuild a fiber post is placed into the post channel and the coronal height is measured and indicated with a fine point marker to the desired length. The proper orientation is verified by rehearsal of the post placement. The canal walls are inspected for any residual cement and gutta percha with a number 35 endodontic brooch. Any residual debris can be irrigated with water using a small gauge needle syringe and the interradicular channel is lightly air dried with an endodontic paper point. A dual curing self etch adhesive Futura Bond DC by VOCO was applied onto the walls of the channel with an applicator and endotim by VOCO to the base of the post space. A endodontic paper point was used to apply the adhesive along the walls of the post space and to the most apical areas. And any excess adhesive was absorbed with the endodontic paper point using a rapid intermittent movement. The adhesive was lightly air thinned using a ADECT warm air tooth dryer and light cured for 10 seconds. This adhesive can be used universally with all light, self or dual cured resins. It can be utilized without light activation or as an optional step with light curing for an additional 10 seconds. A dual cure radio-opaque composite resin material rebuild a DC is injected into the post channel with a needle shaped mixing tube by VOCO. The fiber post is immediately inserted into the post space to the base of the prepared channel and the excess is adapted and smoothed with a double lot sable brush and light cured from different positions, coronal, buccal, and lingual for two minutes. Prior to placement, the post was cleaned with alcohol and the surface was silenated and air dried after 60 seconds. And of course, reports by Mazzatelli and colleagues indicate that industrial peak coating of the post surface with silicate silane layers for enhanced adhesion of core and looting materials does not interfere with light transmission. And also reports by Dos Santos and Galahano in 2008 indicate that light intensity at the deepest level of the intraradicular space may be insufficient to induce proper polymerization and thus a dual cure resin cement is required. Of course, the differences in the optical properties and light transmission along various fiber posts can vary according to many factors, including post size and shape, fiber orientation, and even the diameter of the reinforcing fibers. After polymerization, the fiber post was cut with a diamond burr, an 888 by Brassler, to the predetermined length. Never use a serrated instrument or shears because this can damage the integrity of the post. 
a dual cured radio opaque composite core build up material rebuilda is injected with a syringe tip and AccuDose low viscosity by Centrex over the coronal aspect of the post from the facial and lingual aspect. I enlarge the opening of the syringe tip using an explorer tip. Notice the material maintains its form and is very sculptable. This is a very important characteristic when freehand bonding without using a matrix. The core buildup material was applied and adapted using a long bladed interproximal instrument. Then I sculpt and smooth the material with a number two sable brush into the desired geometric shape, form, and dimension of an ideal preparation. And I post cure for two minutes. This improves the degree of conversion and ensures the hardest surface possible. It is important to place the tip of the curing unit as close as possible to the surface of the core buildup. Rebuild a DC is a dual curing radio opaque fluoride containing flowable composite. The preparation is completed using a round ended tapered diamond burr, a 6850 by Brasser. The existing preparation was modified for an all ceramic restoration with a circumferential chamfer margin. By achieving optimal geometric form for the abutment in the sculpting stages, this can minimize the finishing of the composite, which can potentially improve the physical and the mechanical characteristics of the abutment. The last step of the preparation is the resin coating technique. Dead metal matrices are placed around the adjacent teeth and the preparation is etched for 15 seconds with a 37.5% phosphoric acid semi-gel. Rinsed for 5 seconds and the excess water is removed, leaving the preparation visibly moist. A thin coat of adhesive primer is applied to the moist preparation, air thinned and light cured for 10 seconds. The surface should appear shiny, otherwise repeat this process. I always utilize a resin coating technique on my preparation. Although this is a non-vital tooth, this layer enhances the smoothness of the preparation and thus the laboratory dye. Also it facilitates the removal of the provisional cement. The completed posting core with an ideal feral dimension. An optimal adhesive integration between the components of the post-retained system provides a structural integrity for interradicular rehabilitation. A monoblock system. And remember, it all begins and ends at the interface. And a restorative material properly bonded to enamel and dentin substrate has the potential to reduce marginal contraction gaps, microleakage, marginal staining, and carries recurrence while improving retention, reinforcing the tooth structure, and dissipating and reducing functional stresses across the entire restorative tooth interface while also improving the natural aesthetics and wear resistance. And now, just for a moment, I would like to share with you a special coin that I designed. I call it my moral compass. The three rings on the front represent knowledge, wisdom, and truth. Of course, some people have knowledge and in time gain wisdom, but some people never find the truth. If you turn the coin over, you can see my moral compass. North is the truth, and we have to look for it in our teachers, our friends, and in life. Of course, all the other directions indicate things we need in life. Empathy, humility, honesty, fairness, self-discipline, and self-respect. If you're interested in my coin, you're welcome to contact me. And now, be sure to sign on so I can share with you several clinical scenarios using the two methods for fabricating the direct fiber reinforced resin post system that I use successfully in my clinical practice each day.